Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Attorneys. Uh, thoughts on the Defenders uh, this time for Season 1, Episode 5, Take Shelter. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, I guess we're more than halfway through the series so far and I'm not finding it to be this great masterpiece so far. I'm finding it to be an entertaining show. That's for sure, but I'm not quite as blown away by it uh, as uh, I was by the other Marvel Netflix shows, or as, as I would hope to be. Uh, I don't know, we still have three episodes left after this one, so maybe that will change. Uh, but so far, it's, it's just been, you know, it's been fine. It's been entertaining, but nothing really, you know, jumps out at me. So... Anyway, this episode, uh, this episode was actually quite good. I actually really like this episode, um, because we actually see more of the actual, uh, the Defenders actually taking on the hand as they, um, they're threatened, their loved ones are threatened, basically. Like, they figure out, because that's how, they know how the hand works, and that's how they operate, so they have to get all, all of them together and it's interesting it's a way to get all the supporting characters from all the various shows in one room <laughs> basically which is kind of interesting it was pretty cool uh seeing uh trish and that guy's name is escaping me from jessica jones his neighbor whatever that them talking and seeing karen and foggy over there talking and you know, like i wonder who they are wonder what they're doing here uh so that was pretty cool and of course misty knight's the one taking care of all of them um and then we get uh, Colleen Wing gets her confrontation with her old sensei. It's interesting that they are taking time out to deal with some of the side characters uh, as well, which I like. I, I think that adds uh, texture to the show, which is which is always good. And it was also really cool, of course, seeing uh, Jessica Jones go get Trish and pull her out of the meeting and have to fight off that... Uh, Dude, now, I think he kind of defeated Jessica Jones too easily. He was just about to kill her, and he would have killed her if it wasn't for Daredevil who showed up and took him on. I like how it was cool seeing Trish was like, no way, because she knew who Daredevil was. It's like, oh my god, you know him? Uh, so, yeah, that that part was pretty cool too. But, I don't know, I, this is just a problem I have with Jessica Jones in general. It seems like, it just seems like um, they downplay her superpowers. Like, you've seen it... Not just this episode, but a couple times where she hits someone. And we've seen in the past, like, she can actually kill... Like, she hit Madame um, Gal, I think her name is. And she flew across the room. We've seen before that Jessica Jones can kill people by doing that. Now, granted, she's like this magical hand person, so maybe she could, wouldn't die from it. But um, I do think, like, and I think this is a problem I had with Jessica Jones throughout her own series. And I think it's happening here as well, is that they're under underplaying how powerful she is and underplaying her superpowers which annoys me because it seems like she's the one in the group who's not as uh, helpful really and for that matter with Danny Rand like a lot of times he, when he fights he won't actually use his iron fist which is annoying well I suppose they, he don't want to overdo it but still like all these times where he's fighting and we don't get to see an iron fist I'm like Come on, show us the Iron Fist. I mean, that's his own special thing. Whereas, like, Luke Cage is, like, bulletproof, so he seems like the most uh, powerful one. He was able to capture that uh, that dude, the white hat, I think they called him, although he's not wearing a white hat anymore. And um, so that was interesting. They captured him, and, of course, um, well, I should say it's not so interesting because it went down pretty much as I expected. wouldn't get any information out of him, so what's the whole point of capturing him? Uh, but I don't know. So <laughs> I want to talk about this end scene where, uh, you know, they're getting pissed off with Daredevil for not telling them about Electra because he finally spills the beans, so they're all arguing and all fighting, and they don't notice that the White Hat has... Uh, woken up and he's escaped and he's about to uh, kill, uh, kidnap uh, Danny, which is his whole point, and get the upper hand. Uh, and because they haven't, they weren't paying attention the whole time. I was like, my God, pay attention! But it was cool. But the whole time I was thinking that Stick, um, that he knew what was going on, so I actually wasn't surprised when he just showed up out of nowhere and cut that guy's head off. I thought that was pretty damn awesome. 
uh, actually. Um, and I kind of it made sense because I kind of get the feeling like because Stick, ha both Stick and Daredevil have the acute hearing. So at first I was thinking, why are none of them hearing what is going on? But with uh, Matt or Daredevil, it makes sense because he's too distracted because he's very emotional, talking about Electra, and he's being confronted by everyone. Whereas Stick, I think, well, first he wasn't as distracted, and plus I, I don't think he would let himself get that distracted, that he was more attuned to what was going on. But it seemed for some reason he wanted uh, the white hat to try to escape. Maybe he wanted an excuse to kill him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt that. So I think he let him take Danny Rand uh, captive. Now that's another thing with the Iron Fist. Like when he was captive, why did he just use the Iron Fist and punch the guy? Well, I suppose you could argue that the guy had a knife to his throat, so he could punch his, you know, slit his throat before he could get his Iron Fist out. But uh, I'm not quite buying that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm being nitpicky and others will disagree, but whatever. It just, it just didn't seem right to me. But that being said, I love the way <laughs> they did play it out with Stick. Uh, just coming up and slicing that guy's freaking head off. That was awesome. Um, so we also got um, basically some infighting with the hand, which was pretty interesting. Uh, because they're not happy about uh, finding out that... Uh, Daredevil is still there because they know that Elektra has a connection to her in the past and they're worried that it's a malfunctioning weapon. But uh, Alexandra is still on, totally on board with her, but they're thinking about uh, having a mutiny against her. Uh, I have a feeling that if they tried it, then they would all die. <laughs> and we would just have Alexandra. So I, I wouldn't put that past the plot for doing that. And of course, we get the internal struggle with Elektra herself. Where she's trying to, she thinks of uh, Alexandra as like the mother, and she has a mission in life. And when it was funny when Alexandra put the sword up to her, and it was like, well, if you don't follow orders, then there's no use for you to being around. And she was like, you're absolutely right. That was interesting, uh, but you can tell there's still an internal struggle within her as she's starting to remember more. Because you see, at the end of the episode, she returns to is that Matt Murdock's apartment or her old apartment? Either way. I think it's Matt's, but yeah, it, it's uh, showing that she's remembering her old life. So yeah, this is interesting. I feel, I think there's still opportunity for the show to get it even better. Um, well, we'll just see where it goes from here. So uh, check back with me for episode six. Thanks a lot for watching.